Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in our series where we are taking a look at building patches from scratch on the Behringer DeepMind 6. So today we're going to look at building a bass sound. So without further ado, let's hit prog and compare to get to our default patch and get going. So in the default patch, we're hearing a single oscillator here. I'm gonna head over to oscillator one, which is the one that we're hearing. I'm gonna turn off the sawtooth wave because I want a nice buzzy, but sort of weightier uh, square wave. If we listen to the uh, sawtooth wave, it doesn't have that same sort of bottom end presence that we have on the square wave. We might bring in the uh, sawtooth wave later, but for the moment, we'll start with the square wave. Now, oscillator two currently, um, we're not hearing. So let's bring that up. We can hear that's currently by default tuned an octave below, kind of giving us a sub oscillator situation, which is kind of what we want. Cool. Now, what I would say is that whenever you're layering two pulse waves together, there is a lot of phase cancellation going on. So it's always worth, uh, if you can, adjusting the pulse width of one of them to see if you can get more bottom end happening. So let's try that now. Can you hear that? So normally, as you up the pulse width um, of an oscillator, you'd usually have a drop off in bottom end, but because we're layering together two square waves, that's actually ensuring that we're not getting as much phase cancellation, which is, of course, a good thing. We could also take a look at the tone mod on Oscillator 2, which does some interesting, um, it's kind of a pulse width, but not, and it does some interesting sort of folding of the pulses, and it can introduce some quite interesting harmonics. You hear there that that, that fifth is really emphasised now. I, I tell you what, I could see us modulating that. Should we do that? Yeah. Okay. So let's go into the edit menu for the oscillators. Head over to oscillator two, and here we've got the uh, T mod source, which I'm going to set to LFO two. So that means that LFO2 is moving that slider for us. And as we turn up the tone mod, that's going to introduce the depth to the modulation. <laughs> that's kind of evil sounding. I like it. Right. Okay. Now, I think what we'll do is have this as a mono bass sound. So at the moment, We've got polyphony here and it's not really working for me. Uh, so we're going to head into the poly uh, edit menu here. And in here at the top, we've got this uh, polyphony setting. So at the moment it's set to poly and we can also have poly, but with unison. Um, but let's move across to mono. And now we've got a mono synth. Now it seems a shame given that we've got six voices here that we are letting five of them go to waste here. So let's turn up the uh, unison here to stack some voices together. Let's try three. Ah, that's uh, evil sounding. Now it's also evil, but kind of boring in a way because there's no sort of movement between them and that is what this unison detune slider is for what this does is it detunes each of the voices that have been stacked together and we can use it to do this which is cool right that is a nice starting point for our sound i think Obviously too bright at the moment, but we can get to that. So let's talk about our VCA envelope first of all. Obviously we want this thing to come on instantly, so we'll have our attack all the way down. Um, I think we just want this to sustain uh, constantly like that. At the moment we've got a bit of a release there. I, I think we probably want to keep things hard and sort of on-off organ style. So we'll set our envelope accordingly. Yes. Right, 
Now, this is too bright at the moment. It's cool sounding, but it's too bright. So let's go over to our um, filter here and let's turn it down. Well, obviously now we can't hear anything at all, but we can open that filter up using our envelope. So we've got the envelope control here. This is the envelope depth. And by default, it routes to this second envelope here, VCF. Uh, actually, you can route it anywhere. That's kind of one of the beauties of this synth, but we'll make use of the one that actually says VCF so we can tr keep track of what we're doing. So if we turn this envelope up already, oh yeah. Already we're getting something that I like. Now, uh, attack, we probably want to be uh, instant decay. We'll mess with in a second, but the important one to begin with is the sustain, which is kind of our resting place. So this is kind of the overall uh, character of the sound, and we need to get this sounding just right. So, so we can hear that's kind of our, our resting point there. like that I think yep and again we can have our release almost instant just so we don't hear a click nice cool okay so um, I think we can introduce a little bit of resonance here Yes, I like a little bit of resonance, but that has robbed us of some of our bottom end. The filter on the synth has bring up the resonance. You do lose some of that bottom end, but luckily we have a way of compensating for that, which is on this high pass filter section. We have this boost button, and that gives us a big old bottom boost, which you probably want to turn on for any bass sound, I think. Yes, lovely. Uh, okay, we happy with the filter sweep? Can we make that a bit snappy, do we think? Let's adjust the decay here. Actually, we want it less snappy. Yeah, let's actually have it less snappy. Yeah, okay, I like that, I like that a lot. Right, because we've got a nice mono sound here, I think it'd be nice to add a little bit of portamento, so let's uh, turn that portamento knob up a bit. Can you hear that it's re-triggering the, um, the envelope? when I get down to the bottom there, which I don't really want uh, because I want it to kind of slide up and down, kind of a 303 kind of slide thing happening. Oh, it's not a very 303 sound, but that kind of performance element to it. Uh, so the way that we can deal with that is again in this poly section here. I don't quite know why it's in the poly section, but it is. Um, and we've got this env trigger thing here. And that affects how these sort of overlapping notes are going to work. Now if we set this to legato, whenever we hold down hold down a note and play another one, we get a slide rather than a re-triggering. Probably a bit slow. Let's turn the portamento down. So if you play cleanly, you get the re-trigger. If you play legato, then you get a slide, which is what we want. Okay, um, let's talk about the performance elements here. Now at the moment, if I play lightly, then it's really very quiet. I think for this sort of sound, we don't necessarily want that. So we're gonna head into the VCA here. And where we've got our velocity sensitivity, I'm going to turn that probably most of the way down. Yes, 
uh, to uh, compensate for that, if I go into the edit menu for the VCF, we've got the velocity sensitivity here and I'm going to turn that up instead. So rather than getting a volume fluctuation, we get a filter fl fluctuation depending on how hard I'm playing. Cool. Let's save that because that is sounding nice. Okay, what else can we do here? Well, let's see um, how this bass sound sounds in the high registers, because sometimes bass sounds make good lead sound. And it kind of does, I like that. In fact, if you um, went into the unison here, just to the side, if we set that to unison three, so we had two, basically duophonic synth. Reckon that. That's quite a nice sound. Perhaps I'll leave it on unison three. Uh, no, let's go back to mono, because it's meant to be a bass sound. Come on, come on. Let's stick with our with our conviction, shall we? But you know, uh, as I say, bass sounds can sound great in the upper registers, which this one kind of does. But back down. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, well, probably we can add some vibrato. We'll add some vibrato um, via the mod wheel here. So if we go into the edit menu for our oscillators and head over to the oscillator one parameters, we'll see that the pitch mod source is LFO one, uh, which at the moment is running very slow. So we'll just speed that up a bit. Um, and if we were to turn up the pitch mod here, uh, sorry, that was on oscillator two on, on its own. We get some pitch modulation there. Now we probably don't want to have it uh, on the slider. We certainly don't don't want it on at all times. So what we can do instead, if we scroll down to where we've got wheel to pitch mod, basically that will assign the pitch mod slider to the wheel, and we can decide how uh, much is going to be applied. So if we turn that all the way up, and then we play a note, and we can adjust this parameter until we get our. maximum amount of pitch mod that we want. We can go quite, quite seasick, I think. We can go more than that, I think. What else can we do here? Uh, well, let's just see if adding a little bit of noise will give us a bit more attack, because sometimes it does. I think it's emphasizing the top end too much, so we'll leave that turned off for the moment. Do we want any filters? Uh, sorry, filters, I mean uh, effects. Let's say maybe we want a little bit of delay, because you never know. Obviously, that's way too much at the moment, and we'll adjust the level in a second, but let's go into here to adjust things. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do on the timer slide here, what you can do if you go right the way to the bottom is that you can set it so that it's uh, related to the 
um, ARP or the sequencer. So if you're getting MIDI clock in, that means that your delay is going to be in time. That is a good thing. At the moment, this mode here is in cross, but because we are um, a mono sound right down the middle, we're not getting any variation there. Let's switch that over to ping pong. Whoa. Obviously, we need to turn that down a bit in a second, but that's nice. Um, so just going through here, I'm just going to, on a delay here, we can apply some low cut because we don't want all of that bottom end pinging around our ears. Nor, if we move it to the high cut, I think, do we want all of that top end? Keep things a bit darker. Uh, I think probably the feedback is a little bit high at the moment as well. And we've got this feedback high cut here, which allows us to... You can hear now that the repeats are getting darker each time. Whereas if it's on full, they're kind of staying the same, so we'll have that turn on as well. We'll come back to the main effects here. We'll go down to our level and we'll dial that right the way down because that's way too much. Now if we play these long sustain notes, kind of instant Blade Runner. And if we turn on our arpeggiator, Turned on. That delay kind of adds that sort of uh, additional movement to what we've got going on. See, bass sounds up at the top. Instant rave kind of stuff going on. And that, that delay makes all the difference. If we turn the delay off now. Boring. Put it back in. Accidentally made a, uh, a rave uh, arpeggio sound as well as a bass. Who knew? Nice. So there we go, guys. There is a cool bass sound that also, as it turns out, makes a really nice sort of rave arpeggio sound as well. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, please do hit the thumbs up on the video and make sure you are subscribed as well so you don't miss out on any of the videos that are coming up for the DeepMind 6 and all the other uh, synthesis stuff that we have seen in the past uh, jams and we'll be looking... I think I'm going to revisit the monologue because a lot of people have been asking for some more monologue videos, so I'm happy to help out. Still got some uh, Volker FM stuff to talk about as well, I think. Uh, also, um, if it wasn't already pretty obvious, um, I have been building uh, patches in the background already on the DeepMind 6. So if you're a DeepMind owner, keep a lookout in the next few weeks for a patch pack because I'm having a great time building sounds with this synth just superb stuff. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for joining me again, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.